Open API and Open API. What's the difference? We'll discuss this in today's video on getting APIs to work. We'll talk about these two concepts and you'll learn a little bit about APIs, Open APIs and the Open API specification. Before we go a little bit deeper, let's look at the short version of this. The short version is that an Open API, mind the gap here, right, is a concept, it's an idea. It's the idea that you have an API that is open for others to use, so to speak. And that often means that these others are from a maybe specific audience, maybe it's everybody, but it is an API that is open to be used by others. Let's put it like this. On the other hand, open API is a standard. It's a format for describing APIs in a specific way. It works for a specific kind of APIs, for HTTP APIs, for resource-oriented APIs. And for that, it is a format that allows you to describe that API so that others can more easily understand it. So that's the short version. Let's do a little bit longer version of this. Before we go to the Open API and Open API, let's briefly revise what an API in itself is. An API in its most general form, you could say is a networked and reusable digital building block, meaning that it's something that is accessible through a computer network. It is something that is designed to be usable by many others, not just one specific consumer. And it is you could also say a promise for how others can use the things that you built. If you develop an API, then that API can be used by others and you promise that whatever you developed can be accessed through that API for some period of time at least. And you could also say an API is a language. It's a specific language for how somebody can use your API. It's the way how they have to use your API. They have to send certain requests. They can expect certain responses. There is a certain way how your API functions. And therefore, you could say an API also is something like a language. With this definition of what an API is, now let's dive a little deeper into what an open API is. You could say it's an API, an API that can be openly used. Now that's something where you could say, okay, that's all there needs to be said. But oftentimes there are three different levels, so to speak, of use that are distinguished. Ones are, one level are public APIs, meaning that it's an API that anybody can use. Oftentimes you have to register, but at least in principle, anybody can use this API. Examples here are, let's say, a weather service API where you can sign up and then you can just retrieve weather forecast information. Another kind of openness can be openness to partners. So let's say that you are a shipping company and then you may have an API where others can create shipping orders, but those others need to have, let's say, a contractual relationship with you. So they are partners and not just anybody. And in that case, the API is open to be used, but just by these partners. A third class of openness is something where you would say it's a private API, meaning that it's just used inside your organization. And oftentimes this is something where organizations are trying to become more flexible in how they build things, make it easier for things to be changed internally. So they are creating APIs, but those APIs are intended to be open internally. All of these, I would argue, are different levels of openness, so to speak. And for all of these, the end goal is to create what I would call a composable architecture, meaning that you can build new things by building on existing things. And these existing things are made available through APIs. And because the end goal is this composable architecture, managing these APIs is an important task. And we'll get to that in a minute. But first, let's look at the general picture. A good way to use open APIs could look a little bit like this. So you have a variety of digital building blocks. 
They all are exposed through APIs. Some are intended for the public, some are intended for partners, some are intended for private consumption, but all of them are open APIs. Now this is something you can do, but this makes it hard to understand which APIs are there, maybe making it easier to manage APIs, to secure them, to figure out who's using which APIs and so forth. So a more modern and a better way of using open APIs is to go through an API management solution that provides a catalog. And in that case, a typical pattern of what you would do nowadays would be to say, you have all these digital building blocks that are exposing APIs. You are publishing all these APIs to this API management component. And then this API management component makes APIs available to consumers. And these consumers, again, can be potentially different consumer groups, again, public, partner, and private. So this is where I would say modern API management is, is standing today. We see a lot, of, a lot of releases, a lot of new products being announced in that area of catalogs, universal API management or unified API management. There are different ways how companies are labeling their offerings, but in the end, this is the picture that they are trying to provide. So this is an open API approach, opening up APIs so that they can be consumed more easily. Now let's look at Open API. Open API is really different. Open API is a standardized format for describing APIs. So it's a specific technology, is a format, we'll look at it in a minute, and it is used for a specific kind of API, for resource-oriented API, most often those ones that use the HTTP protocol. And because it's a standardized format, what is nice about it is that you can build tooling and automation around it because OpenAPI is a standard. It's a standard that is developed by the OpenAPI initiative. They are constantly evolving the standard. The current version is, I think, 3.01. And if you're interested what it looks like, we won't go into any details here, but this is the example of an open API description. As you can see, it's machine readable. It's written in a language called YAML. YAML has this model where indentation is meaningful. And what you can see here is an API that is described and it's described through its resources. The resources have certain URI paths. And then for these resources, you are listing what kind of methods can I send to these resources, what kind of requests do they accept and what kind of responses do they send back. So it is, in the end, you could say a machine readable version of this language that the API speaks. The language being what can I send, what does it send back, how do I interact with the API. And now when we combine these two things, now we can see how they fit together. So open API in action would be something that very nicely complements this idea of open APIs. So if we take this picture that we looked at before, where we had this open API landscape with APIs being provided down there, the digital building blocks and being published into this API management layer and the catalog, and then being consumed by whoever is interested in those APIs. Open API now gives us a format how we can describe APIs, make them easier to find, make them easier to understand, make them easier to use because it is a standardized format. And by looking at the Open API specification, I can more easily figure out how an API works. I can more easily use it. And that helps everybody to make this API landscape more productive. So as you can see, open APIs and open API nicely complement each other, but it's important to always make sure that when people use those two terms, 
then it's clear what they refer to. Because if it's not clear, and I've had many of those conversations, conversations can become very confusing and that doesn't help anybody. So always try to make sure that people have the same understanding that you have when you are having conversations around open APIs and open API. So in a nutshell, if we wrap this up, open API is the idea to use APIs openly. It's more a concept of saying it's good for APIs to be open. They still can be limited to certain consumer groups, but in principle, an API should be consumable. It should be something that's exposed to potential consumers. And the API itself is not necessarily always a resource-oriented API, so there are different styles. We won't go into this, but it also could be a, a event-driven API, it could be a query-oriented API like GraphQL, but that doesn't matter here. It's open API in that case, or open API, sorry for that, is really this idea of having APIs that are open. An open API is this standard format for describing APIs. It works best for a specific class of APIs, for resource-oriented APIs that oftentimes use HTTP as their underlying protocol. And because it's standardized, it makes it easy for people and components in this overall picture to use tooling and to have automation in place because you can generate open API, you can consume open API, and it's a well-defined format, so that's good. But it's always important to keep in mind that because open API only works well for resource-oriented APIs, not all APIs in your organization necessarily can be and should be described in open API. Open API is just one format, there are others, async API, for example, GraphQL is another format for APIs, also machine readable. And, and these are just different kinds of APIs. So they're not really competitors of open API. They're just complementing it in open API landscapes. And with this, we're at the end of this explanation. I hope this was more helpful than confusing. I know that sometimes these terms can be confusing, in particular when the naming choice, and I have to admit that I was never a fan of the naming choice of OpenAPI because picking names like this is a terrible idea, but this is what they did, can't be changed now. But regardless of where we are with the names, it's just the fact that this is the name. So if you run into scenarios where people maybe are confused, what's the relationship between Open APIs and OpenAPI, I hope this video helps you, maybe helps them. If you liked it, please give it a thumbs up. Consider subscribing to the channel. There's a lot of API related videos coming up all the time. And this is it for today. Thanks a lot for watching. All the best. See you soon. Bye.